Welcome. This is 30 Minutes of Truth for Life with Pastor Poole, pastor of the Bethesda Baptist Church located in Muskegon, Michigan. Join Bethesda each week on this station as we meet the challenge of change through Truth for Life. And now, Pastor Poole. foundation for what our message will contain is found in the in 2 Corinthians in the 8th chapter and um, I'll read a few verses of the chapter and then I hope you will follow me as I try to make known what it is to excel in grace mm -hmm. and now brothers and sisters we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, extremely, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. 
they gave themselves first of all to the Lord. And then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus just as he had earlier made a beginning to bring also to the completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnest, earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of your Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, Yet for your sake he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich. So we want to think a few moments about this passage, and particularly uh, the fifth through the eighth verse of this chapter. And perhaps a good question to begin with on this Communion Sunday would be, do you have the will to give? It's a thought worth consideration. And we ask the question because we live in a world, in a time, when there is considerable apathy among people who say they believe God. Whenever confronted with the subject, of doing for the poor, for the Lord in his church, for neighbors and friends who are part of our community. We seem to have a difficult time getting ourselves in a position to excel in grace. It doesn't matter where you are in the range of possession. The important thing for you as a Christian believer, a follower of Jesus Christ, is where you are in the range of commitment. When you think of who you are, where you are in life, the question certainly comes when we confront the issues that are daily in our world, where do we stand in love, mercy, and attitudes toward those who are less fortunate than we 
And when I say less fortunate than we, I'm not necessarily speaking of their material situation, but their spiritual situation. Those who are less fortunate than we, who have not recognized the ownership of God of their lives. Where do we stand when we face these issues in our community? I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. What I gather from that proclamation from his lips is that he has really surrendered his life to the Lord. And there is nothing that his word can ask of him that he is not willing to be subject to. Briefly, if it isn't convenient on my day, then I have a problem with it. If it's not something that fits into my agenda, I've got a problem with it. If they aren't persons that I particularly care for, I don't have no time for it. If on my judgment, they don't have the kind of life that I think they ought to have, then I don't want to be bothered with them. But then think about who you are supposed to be. I proclaim that I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. And what does a disciple of Jesus Christ do? A disciple of Jesus Christ disciples others. They don't shut their door when the failing individual stumbles in. They don't turn their back and go the other direction when the person in need is coming to seek something that they may have. Disciples are those who go into the world to make others aware of the God that they have come to know through Jesus Christ. We know him as our savior because somebody discipled us. It wasn't just the preacher in the pulpit. It was the mother on the front row. It was the Sunday school teacher at nine o'clock on Sunday morning. It was the deacon who came by to pick me up or stop me in the yard to remind me that I wasn't acting like a good boy ought to act. It was the woman who said to me, now you don't want to fool with that junk. They were discipling for Jesus Christ. They were not too busy to tell you, son, you need to change your ways. 
They weren't afraid to speak to you about your need of Jesus Christ in your life. I wonder when we will be possessed with the zeal that will cause us to excel in the benefits that God has given to us through Jesus Christ. Is he not a beautiful picture of what it means to excel in grace? How could we better know what it means to be one of God's children than to see God's own son discipling and making it possible for you and I to have life everlasting. My goodness, don't you know? You didn't have anything. What did you have but a stack of wrong? What did you have over here to pay for? Jesus had it. And he set the example. He set the example of how you excel in the grace that he has made possible. And the first thing I want to point out as I hasten, you have to be willing. You have to be willing. I can remember very early in my life, I used to wonder, what in the world is Papa doing calling that a, a willing workers club? We had one in the church. And they were a special group of women that Papa named willing workers. And they were the women in the church who no matter how terrible it was, no matter how difficult others found it, they were those who were always there to reach the person who was in trouble. It wasn't just a little 10 cent group <laughs> looking to satisfy themselves. It was a group of women who were looking at the problems of others in the church and giving themselves no matter what time it took or what material things they had it took they were there to serve the need and in serving the need years later they looked at women who might have gone the other way, who were going the right way. Because the willing workers weren't sitting around wondering how we can do it. it. They were standing on the promises of the Lord. And when the call came, they were always ready because it wasn't by their strength it was because of the Lord's strength. And we possessed zeal because we saw what Christ had accomplished for us.
Are you excited about what God has done for you? Are you willing because he has done so much for you to give yourself to somebody else? That's the prize in the deal. When you give yourself to someone else, you are a character excelling in grace. Because when you truly give yourself, you have to give up something. And you don't resist the need to share, to give up. Whatever fortune you have, spiritual or material, to help the individual who needs someone to give them a hand. That's grace. That's grace. When I reach out to someone who is down, that's grace. When I feed someone who is hungry, that's grace. When I hug somebody that feels unwanted, that's grace. When I take time to say to someone in whatever simple way, you're worthy, that's grace. And so today, whether there's 20, 100, or five, we should believe that we can do all things. Through the grace of God. For you see in the end. It's not who I am. It's who he is. When I make the approach it's not who I am. It's who he is. When I tell the story it's not about who I am. It's who he is. And so how do I excel in grace? I excel by not letting the devil fool me. About my worth. For with Christ, without Christ, I am nothing. Without Christ in your life, living, we are all nothing. So I ask you today to pray one prayer. And that prayer is, Lord, please use me. Don't let me find excuses for going another way. Lord, use me. I know I'm not what I should be for the use, but Lord, fix me. Make me what I ought to be. 
so I can be used by you for the glory and the honor of the kingdom. God willed that your sins would be erased. Jesus answered the call. On the tree, he shed his blood. In the tomb, he demonstrated the victory by breaking the door open, getting up on the third day after he had been there and declaring that all power in heaven and in earth is in his hands. The question today is, are you willing to believe it? Oh, I'm not talking about these ways that we come and sing and act like. A whole lot of actors in the world. But do you, do you really know him? Old folks used to say, it gets in my hands. It makes my hands feel new. And my speech makes my speech new. And then it gets in my feet. It makes my feet new. And then when I get the feeling, I say, he's all over me. Let him be all over you today so that you can excel in grace and can have the joy, the great joy there is in being his, knowing his grace. on Malone Media Productions for all your professional video needs. Services include sports filming and editing, professional documentaries and presentations, promotional videos and infomercials, job fair and recruitment videos, video consultation and training, portrait videos for all your precious moments, church and business commercials, as well as four camera wedding and event filming. Contact Cottrell Malone of Malone Media Productions for a free promotional DVD and quote.